Hello, welcome, it's Pete Chambers' time drive, and it's Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so this time we're going to be talking about Christmas songs, Coventry Christmas songs. Are there any Coventry Christmas songs? Hmm. Well, of course, uh, Blank Expression had the snow is falling all around, but that was about as near as the specials got to a Christmas song. But there is a massive, massive Christmas song connected with Coventry. Any idea what that might be? Well, it's the Coventry Carol. Now, if you look so many artists, if you look on their Christmas albums, inevitably you will find the Coventry Carol. Of course it's going back to the 15th century and it's quite a lament. It's all about King Herod killing all the uh, young boys, the baby boys. So not exactly the happiest Christmas song there could be. But some of the people who have covered it, you've got people like Chaz and Dave. Amazing. I've no idea what that would sound like because it's a hymn. You imagine Chaz and Dave with it. Good job. Anyway, other people, Annie Lennox and John Denver, he's covered it as well. So many people have covered that song. It's incredible. And that's a big song from Coventry. So when you look at Coventry music and you look at Christmas music from Coventry, just think there is a massive song. Uh, another song from the city, uh, which we're going to probably mention later on, I should imagine, is You Trash My Christmas by The Primitives. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's really, really good. The video is hilarious, uh, particularly the last bit with Paul Court. Good old Paul, we love him. Uh, and the Robin on his guitar. I won't tell you any more. You'll have to watch it. But that's great. And, uh, and of course, Daniel O'Donnell. Well, the big Irish star. Did you know that his big Christmas song, The Christmas Kiss, was written by two Coventry people. Yes, Steve and Heather Taylor, who are good friends. Uh, and they actually wrote that song. And that, I think that's one of his biggest hits. So that's come out of Coventry as well. Another song from Coventry uh, is by the Orchids. And it's called Don't Be Like Mr Scrooge. Now the Orchids were an all-girl band. 14-year-old girls from Stoke Park Grammar School back in 1964, I think. And uh, they never had a hit record but they had lots of sort of uh, records that nearly got there. In fact, I think the record company Decca believed in them so much that they actually ended up releasing six records by them, six singles, and some of them actually went to America as well. So that's how much they believed in them. And it was very much sort of a Shangri-La meets good old British fish and chips. Uh, an amazing, amazing band. And if you get the chance to listen to that, and it is on the internet, it is on YouTube, don't be like Mr. Scrooge, they're all standing around this pretend brazier, warming their hands, and it's an interesting video, but the song is brilliant, and that's the Orchids, and they're a great, great Coventry trio. As you know, in Time Drive, we normally talk to stars, but today we've got some superstars because it's our Christmas special party for the volunteers that work in the Coventry Music Museum. And our very first guest today, one of the volunteers, of course, at the Coventry Music Museum, which is where we are, in the ghost town car, of course, it's Leela. Hi. Hello. Hi, Pete. Hi. How are you doing? Really good, thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Thank you. So, the first obvious question, mm -hmm. and be careful how you answer this, because I'm sat here listening, <laughs> What's it like working at the Coventry Music Museum? I say working, I mean it's volunteering of course. Absolutely amazing. I've been here for the whole six years since we opened alongside yourself and Julie. And firstly, I've made some amazing friends here. So all of my fellow, fellow volunteers, thank you. Here. And also all of the Two Tone Village. So it's something that's evolved over the six years and it's fantastic. But also our wonderful visitors. Um, it's lovely to meet people that are as passionate as I am about the music. And I'm always amazed, even after all this time, of people coming all of... Well, we've had people from 89 countries, 27,000 visitors. We have indeed. And yeah. people go absolutely crazy when they get here. So it's, it's like they're... I don't know, it's just everything to them and that's how come we have so many people return. And what's your particular highlight? I know it's probably a difficult one, that. Yeah. Um, I would probably say the car, the evening that the car opened and um, Neville yeah. and Christine were sitting in it uh, doing Ghost Town and it was just one of those moments in time. Absolutely, you don't see them very often but uh, fortunately at the Coventry Music Museum, you do. 
Anyway, do. I'm going to ask this question to all our volunteers today. Okay. What is your favourite Christmas record? Okay, for me, it has to be Caravan of Love by the House Martins. Of course, it would be for you. Big yeah. fan of. Big fan of Paul Heaton and everything he ever does. Um, Christmas 1986 didn't quite make the Christmas number one. Kept off number one by Reet Petit, Jackie Wilson, however. Absolutely fantastic. And I listen to the House Martins all year long, but Caravan of Love is very rarely played other than Christmas time. And why do you think... Um, we're going to blow our own trumpet here, of course. We are a music museum. Why do you think the Coventry Music Museum is number one on TripAdvisor? Just because, firstly, if you look at all of our reviews, and I mean nearly all of our reviews say how wonderful everyone here is, and I'm not blowing mm. our own trumpet. No, it's true, that, One absolutely, of the things yeah. people continue right in the guest book, they're amazed when they come here, and like other museums, that are always lovely, but we take the time for people. It's a personal touch, which is why they return also. And also, we have lots of artefacts that change, like these exhibitions here, this part which is temporary and changes every year, um, I just think every people are amazed at all of the information we have here. Yeah, yeah. it's great, absolutely. So have you got any dedications, Leela? Yeah, so I'd like to make a dedication to my husband, Nick Shergold, who isn't a volunteer here, but supports me 100%, always helps out and loves the place as much as I do. Well, Leela, thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you, you're welcome. And we'll talk to another volunteer in a second. OK, Merry Christmas. Merry thank Christmas, you. thank you. Of course, we're asking all our volunteers today their favourite Christmas song. And there's one particular song, wasn't a big hit, but it's one of my favourites. And I think it's going to be this lady's favourite too, You Trash My Christmas by The Primitives. And we're going to find out why that would be this lady's favourite. Ruth, Ruth Cattell, welcome to the car. <laughs> You've been in this it. car many times, I know. I love this car. So tell us why would The Primitives be your favourite track? Well, my daughter's Tracy, the lead singer around the Primitive. Yes, you heard that first. And it's because of Tracy that my husband Len and I have volunteered for five and a half years um, because they were on the wall of hits and they've got the disc along with Horace Panter and Paul Sampson and other people. Of course, discs, yeah, all the other which stars. Are on the wall outside for everybody to see. Um, so I'm very proud of my daughter, but there was two songs, because there's another one called Silent Night by the Primitives. Of course, yeah, I didn't forget that and one. And that was the one I was going to pick. Oh, well, well we've we managed to get both of them in, yeah. and we never know. You name never know that, what Len might say, yeah? Name that tune, yeah. yeah. So, um, but I find it absolutely amazing. Um, Tracy was brought up with a lot of music in her life, you know, um, when we lived in Australia as well. But I just... Um, Pete came to me in the, on that particular day he said have you seen our museum I said no he said but I'd really like to so we came up and had a look and we were absolutely amazed the amount of memorabilia that's there everything was there and the exhibits and everything and I said wow this is an amazing place he says well we're always looking for volunteers I said well I'm going to be a volunteer of and my course. husband said he would as well and that's five and a half years ago and what I'd say we've been most most times every week and if Pete and Julie go on holiday Len and I yeah look you're after, always there for us yeah we look after Absolutely. the place and um, but I love people and I find that the, uh, the wonderful people that come here and when you explain to them the different things the exhibits and that and, and you can see it brings them back to when they were younger. Mm. It's nostalgic for everybody. Absolutely. And it is, it's absolutely wonderful. And there's a lovely buzz about the place, there really is. Because one, one of your little favourites we're talking about, because this is a great thing mm. about this museum and our volunteers, <clears throat> they've all got their own way of doing things, and I love that. It, it's brilliant, it really is. And I always love it when you always point to Dave Willits, who of course has been in the car as well, yeah. and his mask. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, Dave Willits, uh, he took over from Michael Crawford in Phantom of the Opera, and he did a sounding off here, and Pete interviewed him, and on that particular day he brought a guitar, and he brought his ukulele, and with the guitar he sang The Boxer, but when he played the ukulele, it, it brought 
the thing that made my, you know, it was a wonderful, yeah, and with his voice, yeah. Goosebumps, and uh, he sang I'll See You In My Dreams, which was a song that um, Joe Brown sang as a tribute to George Harrison when he passed away, mm. and, and it's absolutely wonderful, and that's his unique mask, that mask there in our museum was specially made for, um, for Dave Willis. But I also like The Enemy as well. I like lots of bands. There really is so mm. many like bands that I like. Um, but Dave Willits is one of my favourites anyway. Of and I forgot to ask Leela to do it, but would you like to make a dedication to somebody, a Christmas dedication? Um, who would I dedicate to? There's so many wonderful people. Well, there is, people. you know. And, you know, uh, People like Joe and Steph, of course, and... And, and, and Ian and Karen Cross, you know, all the, our supporters. Yes, um, Karen and Ian. Karen's not been very well for a long time, Bless and her. she's she's a wonderful person. They're a lovely couple. I'd like to do, um, dedicate something for them. Yeah, you know? absolutely. That would be nice, wouldn't it? And of course, there's Scylla as well. Uh, Scylla, of course, yeah. She's, she hasn't been very well, so I'd mm. like to say something for her, you know, dedicate the... I wish them well and Merry Christmas and wish them good health. Really. Yeah, absolutely, because the thing is, well, you might not know, anybody that comes to the Country Music Museum, we are a family here, mm -hmm. you know, not just yeah. the museum, there's a two-town village outside and there's loads of stuff there. And, and it's not an advert, it's very, very true. When you come here, you'll feel that, you know, and, and everybody comes and we all worry about each other and we always have great times, you know, there's gigs on here. And it's, it's a great, great time. And I think at Christmas, you know, I know that's a bit cheesy, but it's true, at Christmas, you should think about things like that. And, and it's great. And of course, you know, Christmas is a time for families. So Ruth, thank you very much. Thank and you. And we'll have another volunteer in a minute. Yay! Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. And now we've got Jim with us, another volunteer at the Coventry Music Museum. Jim, hello, hello. sir. I'll show you around. Hello, see. Good to see you. So, for you, what's it like working at the Coventry Music Museum? I like your fez, by the way, very, very... Well, uh, I edgy. thought I'd look the part while we're in the Coventry yeah. Music Museum. For me, it's, it's, it's meeting the people that come here and the, the dedication of everyone involved with the museum. You know, I, when I started volunteering here, I just loved what they'd done anyway. But since volunteering here, it's just... You just don't know who's going to come through the door. And, that, and that's the beauty of it to me, really, you know, just the unexpectedness of, of it all, really, you know. And, the, and the, the way it's been a whole lifetime for people, the music that's yes, generated right, yeah, in yeah. country, you know. It's, totally, I mean, you know, most of the people, of course, yeah. the two-tone people, you know, you see all the tattoos and the ink, yeah. and you know it, it, it's a lifetime thing, it's never going to change. It, and that's great, and it's great to be able to, to give that to the people that come. Yeah, like you say, it's more than just the music, it's the whole, the way they look, everything they do, and, and the, the values of two-tone, mm. you know, and, and the, the music that's been generated. In but country. you're probably the same as me, because it's always nice when somebody comes in and they're looking for Delia Derbyshire yeah. or they're looking for the Beatles or something else so there isn't Two Town yeah we love yeah. our Two Town but there is other things in here it's not just about that and we just think that's great and uh, you know we don't want to make this whole episode one big advert for the place even though we are fantastic of course aren't we guys? Yeah! Yeah of course we are but it really is true it's a great place and if you haven't been where you been? You need to visit but Jim what's your favourite Christmas record? My favourite's probably, well, it voted the nation's favourite is Fairy Tale of New York. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. It's yeah just, that, that would probably be uh, one of mine. It's you know, just a fabulous with... song, you know, and it works so well with Kirsty McColl as well. And it's just one of them songs, a little bit off, yeah, offbeat for Christmas. But well, we were discussing this today, weren't we? We were talking to Neil Davis earlier on, and we were talking about there's a guy now, some DJ that wants to ban it, you know, and what's, what's your view on that, how somebody could come along as a presenter and suddenly declare that this song, which has been around for years, should be banned? Well, absolutely ridiculous, to be honest, you know, there's a few words that mean nothing nowadays. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, it's it, been played all the time, so what's yeah. the difference, you know? You know, who are these people? It just annoys me, but there we well, are. absolutely, you know, they... Well... What have they done, really? They, you know, 
put a record out there that's as good as, mm -hmm. maybe we could judge them then, but no, it shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be banned at all. No, it's, absolutely. It's absolutely ridiculous, really. There's far too much going on. I'm going to put you on the spot now, and I haven't, met, I haven't asked this question to the rest of the volunteers, but I might come back to it. Um, tell us something about yourself that people may not know. Something you do, a hobby maybe, or something? I mean, I know you've got a lot of hobbies. Well, hobby-wise, I'm, I'm a sort of secret photographer. I, I, I can't go anywhere without my camera, really. Oh, right, but, OK. Uh, I sort of wish I had the camera back in the day at, at, at a lot of the early gigs. It were, yeah, don't you know, be all, yeah. And, you know, you see some of the, like, John Cole photography. It's just fabulous, the exhibition that's going on here now. But you just so wish you had your camera back in the day to record some of the, the moments that you saw, you know, some of the bands mm. and that. Whereas nowadays, every concert... Well, yeah, so yeah, yeah it's know, probably the other heavy, way now. It's yeah, annoying. too much, yeah. too much, really. But, yeah, I do like my photography and I love, you know, bits and bobs. I like the motor GPs and the bike racing. And yeah, you like a lot of look, that. Yeah. Looking on your website, the thing is, we say about some of the secret thing that somebody might not know, but everybody knows everything about everybody else now because it's all there on Facebook. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, it's crazy, but, isn't uh, it? It's not too much of a secret, isn't it? But it drives mm. some people I know mad. You know, well, cameras always up. But, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Right, Jim. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank Great you very to see much you. And Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone. All the viewers. We'll be back in a minute with another volunteer. Yay! <laughs> and the next one, please. It's only Len Cattell. Yes, hello, sir. Merry Christmas. How are you doing? I'm okay. We've had a great day again. Of course, yeah. Another day, another Saturday, another yeah. wonderful time. Yeah. So, what's your favourite exhibit in the museum? Um, I haven't got anything but everything. Yeah, you like the lot. I, yeah. I like the lot. You know, the car is fantastic. Of course, yeah. And um, the, uh, of course, the dedication to the primitives, the enemy, uh, the specials, you name it. Mm. You know, since I've been here, I've met people I wouldn't have met in ordinary life. Frank, you know, Frank Ifield. A lot of young. You remember him? You, yeah. <laughs> You know, the younger generation won't, wouldn't know him, but we, I grew up with, you know, Frank, people like Frank Highfield and, um, and Vince Hill. Vince Hill, Hill. People I wouldn't have met no. in my ordinary life. So I got the museum to thank for that. Oh, that's you brilliant. Know? I mean, yeah. and of course, you're, you're uh, as we mentioned earlier on, she's Tracy from uh, The Primitives. You're Tracy's dad, yeah. of course, yeah. Tracy's mum earlier on. So how does that feel to see Tracy there in a museum, you know, you know, well, a museum piece got yeah, to help us, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm very, we're very, very proud of her, obviously, you know, um, but Tracy looks on it as a job. Yeah. She's not one of these, you yeah. know. Um, a diva, she, she's yeah, definitely you know, not a diva. And I'm no. glad she isn't yeah, in that respect, well, she's you been know. Built up right. but, um, you know, I'm, we're proud of her very much, and it gives Ruth and I a great thrill when we take friends to a concert or somebody asks, well, uh, where's Tracy playing, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it's it's very nice. Yeah. You know, it is. It's really, um, I was going to say compensating, but no, yeah. It, yeah. Well, just to ask as well, um, the fact is, you, know, you must have had sometimes somebody coming in who think they know all about the primitives and say stuff to you, and then you realise you obviously know it's not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does happen occasionally, but some, I mean, uh, one article, for instance, they believe she was Australian. Yeah, yeah. For the start. There's yeah. a lot of that going, yeah, well yeah. around, absolutely. Um, one person puts it and everything's yeah. the same, you know. And, I mean, if you want to know the reason why, you know, she was doing a gig down in London in the early days, and one of the, the uh, media reporter asked somebody uh, what was the name, and she said Tracy Tracy, and uh, so somebody got it around that we named her after Spencer Tracy, the great yeah, yeah, know, Hollywood film star, yeah. and uh, they were saying, oh, she was born in Australia, so. I correct on Australia. Yeah. She did spend some time in Australia and then come back to England to 
unbeknown to Ruth and I, to pursue that career. Mm. You know, we didn't really know, and she didn't tell us. And she's a very modest girl, and that's what I like about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's my daughter, and I love music. I love all kinds of music, and just because she's my daughter, I love the Primitives for what they are. You but know. they are a great band, anyway. Yeah, you know, they are. I mean, that's that's a definite thing. Yeah. But speaking of uh, your favourite music. What is your favourite Christmas record? Well, apart from my, the Silent Night and You Trash My Christmas, as uh, somebody earlier said, The Pogues. Um, Fairy tale, of course. Yeah, 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 that's one of my all time great. Here's a hard one for you. Sum up the Ghost Town Car in three words. Three words. Three words. Three words. Absolutely brilliant. Ah, oh, I love it. Very good. <laughs> Len, thank you. Merry no Christmas, worries, mate. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. We'll be back soon. And we're back with Ian. How are you doing, sir? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Pete. Good to see you. Good to see you. the hat. Look at Thank this you. hat. Yeah, yeah. That's what, have you got that on camera? That's wonderful, that hat. Yeah, bowl you over that hat. <laughs> Absolutely bowl you over. OK, I'm going to start with you straight away. What's your favourite Christmas record? Christmas, that's a tough question. It is, it it's is. a big Yeah, one. there's so many good ones, but I've got to say, um, I've got this album by Nick Lowe and he does a track, uh, Roger Miller, remember King of the Rats? Yeah, I remember It's called him. Old Toy Trains and it's about a young lad getting a train trap for Christmas and it's very sentimental. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. sounds a bit sad. Nah, it is a bit, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. but hey, you yeah. <laughs> know, that's Christmas records yeah. for you. I mean, yeah. the Coventry yeah. Carol, you know, that's that's no hoot. But um, what's your favourite thing about working at the Coventry Music Museum? Just the buzz off the volunteers and the visitors and the amazing people you meet and uh, from all over the world and everybody's sort of totally different. You know, people come here for different reasons and, you know, it's not all two-town, but, you know, two-town's a massive part of it. And, of course, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's great if you meet somebody who's coming in to see Dealer of Derbyshire or The Sorrows or uh, Frank Oldfield, whatever. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And have you got a dedication? Yeah, Pete and Julie. Let's oh. hear it for Pete and Julie. Oh, well, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, that was yeah, very nice. Yeah, we yeah, like that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what's your favourite country artist? That's a hard I one, think, isn't it? I think I've got a, I'm a fan of the Sorrows and the Freak Beat stuff, you know. Yeah. Good choice. I think, I think Good choice. A great band and a bit underrated and all, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Don Farden, what a great voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. very, very More powerful. Solo uh, success than yeah. with the Sorrows. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In America as yeah, well. Yeah. That's pretty good. Mm. So, how long have you been working here? Uh, since and February. February, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. one less, of the new boys. The year, I am, yeah. 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 And you don't regret it. No, no. Yeah, Don't regret brilliant. a thing, you know. Why? Why would you regret, you know, working in a well, volunteering in a, such a an amazing space, you know? Absolutely. A, 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 a real living museum. Yeah. More than anything yeah. else to me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But you've um, you've got quite a passion as well, haven't you? Tell us about the cramps. Oh, yeah. I, I discovered the cramps in 1979, and uh, you know, I've seen them 14 times, which ain't bad for me a US band who visit the UK infrequently, you know. Uh, I, I just collect everything by them and uh, 10 years ago, well, yeah, 10 years ago, nearly 11 years ago, we lost Lux Interior. Uh, he, he's the main man, the yeah, singer, nice. and uh, my son said to me, he says, uh, we've got to do something about that, you know. So, I, you know, he says, uh, I'll give you some lessons on the deck and I'll get you a gig. And he gave me about 10 lessons on the decks and got me a gig at the old Tin Angel in Spawn Street and we put a cramps night on and I've been doing it every year since then, you know. And you did like a fanzine as well, which, a, which is brilliant. I wrote a, a, a book, yeah, yeah, about the Cramps' influences because they cover a lot of other people's stuff, like obscure rockabilly and sixties garage punk and mm. movie, B movie soundtracks and novelty stuff, you know. So yeah, maybe it's, maybe I'll get it published one day. Yeah. You ought to, you ought to really push that. But that's brilliant. Mm. But. Uh, Merry Christmas, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So it's Christmas, and it's the time of the year we like to remember the people that we work with, that we care about. And I'd like to 
wish happy Christmas to Leone and Steve. And Steve made this car, he found it and he put it all together for us. So thanks guys. And I'd like to thank Alf and Angela for all the help that they do for us. And I'd like to help... And I'd like to thank uh, Sucky and Scott. Wish them a Merry Christmas. And we'd like to thank all of our wonderful volunteers, all of our lovely visitors. And the two people who made, made it all possible. possible. Pete and Julie, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! And someone else that always supports the village, Chris Sidwell. With the Christmas tree, a lovely, lovely lilting song for Christmas.